having a Time for Change Awakening call on this line tomorrow night at 9 p.m. Eastern, Wednesday. I'm going to share some things that might set some people kind of like in what uh, type of mode and uh, it's time to, to release this, this information to start with this so that uh, we take the next step in existence. So I suggest that you might want to bring something to write with. I always recommend that. I, I mean, computers are great, but uh, they're pretty archaic. And uh, hard copy is good backup. What do you think you, how you would be or your uh, perspective for yourself? That number one, it's always about you, and I've said this before, but you, you are very important to you. And the more that you begin to realize many things about you, and I'm not talking about judging yourself or being critical on yourself or analyzing, okay, but just within the flow of the gratitude of your existence. Once, once each of us come to a, a, a full realization of who and what we are, then everything externally goes through metamorphosis. You view things and how you react are just completely different than how you were when you were engaged with externality, all of the things outside of you. When we look at one thing, and Victor Hugo said this quite well, there's only one thing more powerful than all the armies of the world. That is an idea whose time has come. Our imaginations are so crucial, and we've been basically tricked into believing that, you know, we don't have imaginations. You know, though that's when we were kids. So it's you, you, you know, stop that, uh, Bobby. You know, that's silly. Quit, you know, you know that, that doesn't exist. That's just a figment of your imagination. And... So as we, as these bodies prematurely age, we lose that imagination, most of us do. And instead of nurturing it and having it expand more and more and more and more and more, always expanding, so you stretch it. So when you can imagine the, mo the, the, the most, the, the, to you, your imagination, as far as you can stretch it. I mean, when you're thinking of something, and, and of course the ego comes in and says, oh, that's silly, you know, get back over here. That's silly. That doesn't. Uh, that's just not possible. Okay. And then you begin to maintain or manage or supervise or master the fact that my imagination is everything. Whatever I can imagine. And you ever notice that when you do imagine, and in, in your first, when you first send that imagination, when you, you send that thought out. It's yours. There's nothing attached. You ever notice that? In that brief moment, there's nothing attached to it. There's no doubt. There's no what ifs. There's not this, 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 this. It, it's just let go. You just release it. Now, you can do that once you're able to do that across the board. That everything through the heart mind that you release over, because you're mad, you've mastered the mind. Through the heart, mind. So you're, you're you're directing the mind on what to generate as far as thoughts. It is it dictating to you. It's a big switch for all of us. It's a major shift for all of us. And are you more important than the universe? And I don't mean ego. I 
advice. I mean, from the heart, mind, your is yes. You are because each of us are orchestrators. The wheels and the cogs and the gears of existence would move at a snail's pace if if we were not at the wheel. It would move so slowly. We're we're kind of like the lubrication to make sure everything is flowing. And since our minds are always they're always busy thinking. And really, okay, don't you ever find yourself that continuously planning, pretending, yearning, wishing, hoping, and scheming for things to be better than what they are? Can any of us deny that? Okay. Can, us, can any of us deny that? We're, we know that our mind is illusion to a certain extent. We do know it from the beginning. And it's always in motion of thinking. It's continuously planning, pretending, yearning, wishing, hoping, and scheming for things to be better than what they are. Isn't that true? How many of us can say that you're completely content forever? So the mind is basically actively creating something about 99 plus percent of your life. And looking into the past and the future and trying to figure out how it can get exactly what it wants. And the interesting thing is that the mind doesn't realize that there is the most glorious, amazing gift of bliss available if it can simply remain present to the here and now. It cannot. It's very difficult for the mind to stay in the now because it's always off. Have you ever noticed that with yourselves? That it's always off into the past or the future. It's the past or the future. If any of us have ever tried to hold the mind in the now, which, you know, I practice that all the time. It's, re- it's constant. Is you, tr- you, you, you try to hold the mind in the now. And you'll notice that it instantly slips onto something else the moment you try holding it there. You ever you ever notice that? You say, okay, I'm going to be in the now. And, and so you're in the now. At that brief moment, you go, okay, I'm in the now. I'm focused on my breathing. And then you're, you're off somewhere else into the future. As soon as you move yourself into the now, it then gets off into other directions. And you try holding it there. And so you see, our minds love to remain the master over our lives. It likes to tell us what to do, where to go, how to get there. It doesn't understand one very key thing. That it simply cannot remain in control when it's brought into the now. You see? You see how important the now is? And I'm not saying it's easy for any of us to stay in the now. Because we wander. Because of the mind. It takes us off this direction, that direction. And then next thing you know, we're in the future. And what are we doing in the future? Okay? Either the past or the future is continuously planning, pretending, yearning, wishing, hoping, and scheming for things to be better than what they are in the now. That's why the mind constantly pulls us out of the now into the future or the past. It skips over the now. It doesn't want the now. It doesn't care to have the now. Say. And it loves to be it remain it loves to remain the master of our lives. And it likes to tell you what to do, where to go, and how to get there. It doesn't understand that the fact that it, it, it cannot remain in control when it's brought into the now, and that's the purpose of staying in the now. It, it, it is amazing at analyzing everything. 
and it is a great movie machine for projecting what's going to happen next. But the mind loves interpreting what has just happened and labeling it. Back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. It, it does these mega Google searches in the past and future, day and night, all year long, all lifetime long. Now you can understand why you may be tired at the end of the day. You ever feel that way? And maybe, maybe physically, maybe you've been doing some hard labor, or you're just drained and you don't know why. You go, ah, I feel like I've been hit by a truck. And the reason that is, is that the mind is never, it never rests. And back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. And it, it, it mega Google searches in the past and the future, day and night, all year long, all lifetime long. And that's why sometimes we go, wow, I'm burnt, I'm tired, I'm, you know, I'm exhausted, I don't know why, what's wrong with me? That, 99% of the time, is what is going on. Have you ever wondered, have any of us, what our lives would be like if we were the master of our minds? You ever, you ever, you ever ponder that? What would it be like for, for all of us to be free from the mind? And if we were 100% aware of our thoughts, at peace with each thought, at peace with each thought, and I emphasize at peace with each thought that arises, and be able to observe and not react to it, wouldn't that be wonderful? Give that attention for a moment. You say to yourself, what would it be like for me if I were 100% aware of my thoughts and at peace with each thought that arises and be able to observe and not react to it? What would it be like what would what would I have to say okay so would you have to say no to to find total harmony with the tens of thousands of thoughts 60,000 thoughts on average that are flying through your, your, your brain every day if you really wanted to experience this starting with becoming an observaholic which means all you do is observe. You, you, then you start to practice relaxing deeply into your body and watching where the mind is going and what is its agenda. Most of us never even think of this. And then what follows? Very soon you discover how to trust yourself and not the mind. And this very knowing is what will lead us into an outrageous freedom. Now, it, it's, it, it does, you know, that ego mind, it's like, it's constantly trying to uh, fabricate and put together things for itself. If the mind was a real thing, and we all know that it isn't, we could train it and then we'd feel safe, secure, and happy. Yet, in reality, there is no actual mind that exists to be trained. There are just thoughts passing through each of our awarenesses. If we try to train our minds, we will have to constantly control our minds like an elephant on a leash that has not been potty trained yet. This will create all sorts of problems or issues. The need to control the mind creates tension. It's a feeling of being on the verge of chaos and decision, which leaves us feeling scattered, insecure, uncentered at the end of the day. Now, if we want to oversee, and it, it, the word control, hmm, let's say master. If we want
want to master this wild beast, there's only one thing we can do. There's only one thing. Listen to the silence beneath the mind. Listen to the silence beneath the mind. What does that mean to you? Listen to the silence beneath the mind. That's where it is. Listening to the silence beneath the mind. Our relentless mind chatter will soon be calm and at peace. And it's, it's only through relaxing into an unfocused space that is deepening in silence and stillness. Will your mind relax, find peace, and be actually be of service to you, rather than you being service to it? Now, we choose to create, or we don't. We must, you, you can choose, or not, or must, create a feeling of timelessness in order for true silence to move into you. What is timelessness? There is no time. There is no hurry. Okay? There is no performance date deadline. And in this silence, the mind will bow down to you and become a disciple of you and listen to you and obey your command. Create a feeling through the heart-mind of timelessness in order for true silence to move into you. And in this silence, the mind will bow down to you, become a disciple of you, listen to you, and obey your command. And to find true freedom in this lifetime, we either choose or we don't choose, or we must master this experience called your mind. And when the mind becomes your greatest devotee and is a true disciple of you, then you can experience the total liberated divine spirit that you purely, truly are and bask in the peaceful essence of your very being within every single moment of your life. You heard me talk about the bridge over the river of void. Many of us will not cross that bridge. Not, and that we look at the bridge, the bridge is sturdy, but you know, some of us have even doubt that the sturdiness of the bridge and falling into that torrential, rushing, foamy white water beneath with rocks and everything. Some of us may cross that bridge reluctantly as the mind tries to pull us back. Others will be in the silence. And the, and the mind will have become their disciple. And then, and only then, will they freely walk across that bridge over the river of void and into the land of the unknown. We can't learn anything except by going from the known to the unknown. If, you, if The known is what you know. You don't learn from that because you already know it. The only way that we learn is to go into the unknown. That's only if you have mastered and the mind becomes your disciple. So, to find true freedom in this lifetime, as we master the experience called the mind, when the mind becomes our greatest devotee and a, a true disciple of us, of each and every one of us, then you can experience the totally liberated divine spirit that you are, bask in the peaceful essence of your very being within every moment of life. You start to master your mind today by being curious about one thing. One thing. Be aware when
when you're having a thought that when you're having an experience, okay? Be aware when you are having a thought and when you're having an experience. What's the difference? This means noticing when you're thinking about having an experience of life versus when you're actually having an experience of life. You gotta pay close attention here and really notice the difference. The simple ancient Jedi mind trick that we see with Star Wars brings you one step closer to find the source and conscious essence of your being. It lets you drink from the erotic juice of the sparkling being that you are. And it lets you know who you are beyond your mind, your thoughts, and your body. And this consciousness is what absorbs the mind and releases it from its prison so that you are free from it. So you, you can, anytime any of us can take this very moment right now to choose to be aware of your awareness, which is aware of your thoughts, ideas, actions, and forms. And being aware of each thought the mind is having, life becomes profoundly deep, intensely powerful, and extremely meaningful. Only from this space of pure, untainted awareness can our total being become alive. And in this space, we'll find a cosmic silence in which we'll discover true freedom. And the mind cannot find it. It will never find it. See? It will never find true freedom. Only the silencing of it allows for the discovery of it. Only the silence of it allows for discovery of it. If you want to rid all chaos from your life, dive deeply into this silence for about 45 minutes a day. It's like what we do some, somewhat uh, on these meditations. You'll find an end to the endless mind chatter and total silence of the heart and stillness of the mind and breath. It is the secret to total freedom from the mind. And once you are willing to absorb this silence, and you will find a greater experience of freedom than you have ever imagined before. The day silence has been made your home, the day silence has been made your home, and this is your choice, the mind will begin to relax and freedom will be your every breath. Not only does God play dice, but he sometimes throws them when they cannot be seen. Stephen Hawking. An overflowing abundance of peace, love, and prosperity consciousness. This is what's so ironic for all of us. Is already inside of us. How do you find it? Why have I always been searching everything outside of me? Because the mind is your master. You are the master of the mind where it becomes your disciple. And then when you actually reside within in the peace that you are, then you will discover the overflowing abundance of peace, love, and prosperity consciousness already inside of you. This is the ultimate freedom. Everybody's been searching for this freedom, fighting wars for freedom. You know, destruction, murder, death, kill on a continual basis on this planet. And that is totally the opposite of what we truly are with the, within this. Imagine that. This is the ultimate freedom that is available to, to each and every one of us now. There's no need to look inside your body for it. Stop what you're doing. Just look inside. Look beneath your socialized conditioning and mental chatter that the mind gets wrapped up in. Unravel yourself. Get to know that ever-flowing current of peace which is beneath the fear. Only if you truly dive into your core will you find it. Not inside your body. I think a lot of people think it's inside the body. It has always been there, and it always will be there. 
This is the, the divine being that each and every one of us are, and total freedom is our most natural response to our divine being. See? Listen to the silence beneath the mind. This is what will set you truly free. This is where you turn the dial, where the mind becomes your disciple, and you reside in the deep peace that you are, finally discovering what you are. This alleviates and eliminates all of the suffering, frustration, anxiety, disappointment that people experience on this planet, the civilization. It's in this very now. Millions, billions are experiencing it. In this journey that we've all decided to take, you will discover eventually the true freedom that you really are. All this other stuff is nothing but a projection. If you've ever sat by a 35 millimeter uh, uh, projection, movie projector, you hear the noise, but you see the frames clicking and making motion. That's the mind projecting how you're to think, feel, what to do, how to do it. That's why the bicameralism on the mode on this planet is so rampant. Because you imagine this, you don't really have any direction as bicamerals. You only have the mind with a leash around your neck pulling you through life, directing you where to go, how to go, what to go, on and on and on. And what I'm sharing in this meditation for you to go in to the core of you, not the body, not inside the body, it's not there. It is within the God that you are, which is not the body, it's outside the body. It's beyond the body. It's, it's into pure consciousness and even beyond that. So if you will, in this meditation, listen to the silence beneath the mind. This is how you will be able to shift the mind into your disciple rather than your master. So if you will go to the place you're not going to be interrupted, and I'm sure we all are, and we relax the body. Easy thing to do, to relax the body. The more you become aware of what you are, the more the body will just automatically relax. Every bone, every muscle, every tendon, everything just falls off. All tension, disturbance, all created by your master, the mind, who you are going to shift into your disciple by being in peace. So the body responds, anything that you may have attached, any baggage that you're dragging through this life, that for some incessant reason you're holding on to for, for no apparent direction, let it go. Surrender to it. There's no reason for any of us to have anything because we already can experience everything. If you understand that, that you can, you don't need to have everything. That's the mind dictating to you. And it's never satisfied anyway. And we all know that. And then, of course, it creates the ego as an illusion to continually keep you in the goop. So when you literally can experience everything, why would you need to have anything? It's not the having, it's the experience. So the body relaxes. And what do we do? We move into the now. Do, do we 
have anything else, really? Do we have a past? Past is gone. Well, yeah, I have a past. No, we don't have a past. The past is always gone. It's always over. Why would we have something that's over? We don't. Do we have a future? No, we have the now. The now creates the future. The purpose of being in the now is to still the mind. You still the mind. What does that mean? You begin to shift into the peace that you are. You center into the God, not the body, and the heart-mind. When you do this, the mind begins to realize that it no longer controls you, it no longer masters you. It then becomes your disciple that you choose to direct it however you wish. So the now is the secret to continually moving into the peace within the God that you are. So in the now, in the very moment, the space between heartbeats, there is peace, there is silence. And embrace that silence. It isn't easy, it doesn't matter how focused we are, because the mind is not going to let up real easily. It is gonna, it's just going to dig in deeper, if anything, because it will start to realize that you're slipping away from it. Some of us will go into the past. We all go into the past. It's reminiscing. You know, we, we look at certain things and uh, we, we go, well, you know, I did this then. I'm not going to do that now. So it's a teacher in a way. It, the past is not all bad. It's not bad at all. It's just an understanding of these conscripts, these grids of energy creating illusions through thought. And so we begin to realize is that as I wander off, I concentrate on my breathing, so I'll stay in the now. Because we all wander off, and it doesn't take us long. We could be in the now for three seconds, and we're off into something else. So it's constantly moving into the now and being into the now in your breath. We take the breath. The breath is very important. Focus us on the now. It helps us helps guide us into the now. When we're focusing on your breath, what happens to that? You still the mind. With the breath, in the now. Because your whole direction is, is that you have no expectations or attachments. All you're doing is you're moving into your natural state of being, which is in the core of the God, which is total peace and stillness. Then you can watch everything without getting involved. You can watch the thoughts that the mind keeps throwing, thousands of them. You don't have to manage them. You don't have to direct them. Excuse me. You just move them. You then watch them move, like the clouds. Like I've said, it's just you're up in the sky and the clouds are just moving by. You're not picking at them. You're not reaching them. You're just watching. You have no motivation to interact with those clouds, those thoughts. You move into peace. So with the body relaxed and, and with our divine positive energy, our breath, we're going to take the breath through seven chakras through the center of our bodies, all different colors, wheels of light, energy vortexes, all different shapes of flowers and geometrical designs within the center of them. And these are, these, these are our energy transfer systems from spirit from etheric to physical, from back to physical etheric. These are not physical in the body. They are etherical, they're spirit, spiritual. They're essence, since the bridge between the two. And we have our chi, our God force, that which runs this body, the energy that runs this body, is our chi, our key, our prana. Our God force, light energy, love. So we bring it through the root chakra, the Molotara. This is a red wheel of light. It's career, money, mindset, 
a sense of belonging. Do you ever have a sense of belonging to yourself? It's a good start. The root chakra represents our foundation and feeling of being what? Grounded. What does grounded mean? It means that you're centered. You're at peace. You have no expectations, attachments. See? It's the base of the spine, tailbone area. Emotional issues, connections, or survival issues, such as financial independence, money, and food. Do you realize what would happen if the majority of the people on this planet were to come to a full realization and end up mastering the mind? They would, the, the, the chakras alignment and everything would be absolutely moved into perfection as we go through them. You'll understand is that we would not have these issues of worry about financial independence, money, and food. We would not have blockages in our spine, rectum, legs, arms, circulatory system. This is the physical association. Then we move to the sacral chakra, the vatasana. This is our sexuality and pleasure energy vortex. It's, it's an orange wheel of light. It's our connection and ability to accept others and new experiences. Because if, if you're not in peace and you haven't fully accepted yourself, how are you going to do that with anybody else, the other parts of you? And how are you going to be inspired for new experiences? You're not. Lower abdomen, about two inches below the navel and two inches in is where it's at. What are our emotional connections and issues? Sense of abundance. How many people have this feeling that they, they don't have abundance? But in reality, they're all, they're all abundance. It's well-being, pleasure, sexuality. That's the sacral chakra. It's a physical association, reproductive organs, kidneys, bowels, and immune system. And we move to the solar plexus chakra, the Manapura. This is the yellow, golden wheel of light. This is our ability to be confident and in control of our lives. The confidence comes from the heart-mind, which is the peace, which then moves beyond the mind, and then the mind becomes the disciple of you. So what happens? We have confidence through the heart-mind eternally. We have complete management of our lives over the mind. It's in our upper abdomen and the stomach area. And what are some of the emotional issues we experience? Self-worth, self-confidence, self-esteem. How many people have you come across, maybe yourself, where you're constantly doubting yourself, that you don't believe in yourself, that your self-esteem is low? I'm not deserving. I shouldn't have all this. Something bad's going to happen and it'll all go away because I shouldn't have this. I should be, you know, just poor and destitute. That would be better. Physical association is, is the central nervous system. Your pancreas, your liver, your digestive tract, and your skin. And then we move to the green, the emerald green will of light, the anahata. This is our heart chakra. It's our ability to love. If everybody on this planet had, had moved into the core of their being, into the peace, the silence, and operated from there, and then the mind became the disciple of that peace and silence that you oversaw all the thoughts that you directed in the direction you wanted it to, and the universe would answer immediately. This would be a whole different experience, wouldn't it, for all of us? So then you know, we move to the blue wheel of light, the throat chakra, the Vishuddha. This is our self-expression. It's how we present ourselves, how our ability to communicate, not just outside of us, but with us, with ourselves. It's our emotional issues, our communication, self-expressions of feelings, the truth. Why, why, why do so many have such difficulty in expressing their feelings? Why? Because the mind is controlling them, telling them what to do. You can't do that because you, what, what if they respond this way? It's all about fear, and the mind interjects that fear constantly. That's why a lot of people have a very difficult time expressing their feelings, their truth. Physical association.
Association, thyroid, respiratory system, teeth, and vocal cords. Then we move to the third eye chakra, the ashna. This is our ability to focus on and see the big picture. It's to understand who we are, what we are, the peace, way beyond the body. It's our forehead between the eyes, you can call it the brow chakra. Emotional issues that we experience, intuition, imagination, wisdom, ability to think and make decisions. How many, okay, how many people, how many of us on this planet have the ability to think? Every one of us. Why is it that the majority doesn't? Because it's a slave of the mind. Physical association, pituitary gland, eyes and sinuses. And then we move to the crown chakra. Connection to the divine. What is the divine? It's the center and the core of your being. It is your peace. It's where everything is and has always been. The mind tries to keep you away from the core of your being in discovering this because it knows it will no longer be a master over you. You will become the master over it and it will become your disciple and you will maintain peace and stillness. The, 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 the crown chakra, it's fully connecting spiritually. It's the very top of our heads. Inner and outer beauty, our connection to spirituality. This is a violet wheel of light and is pure bliss. And the physical association, pineal gland, brain and nervous system, so we've brought, as, as we just take that easy breath in, all the way up through the center of our seven chakras, through the center of our body, up to the top of our heads. This is the God force energy. This is the deep eternal love. This is the divine breath. And as we all combine that and we condense it, we hold it briefly, I am light, I am love, I am. And as we do that, we condense it into pure liquid energy omnipotently powerful and we release it over the pineal gland you view the, you view the pineal gland any way you want I view it as a uh, rosebud green ball and as I release this pure liquid energy over it I watch it just expand come to full vibrant healthy life and a beautiful fragrance and all of these multicolored faceted petals and it's vibrating and it's shimmering, and it's absolutely magna glorious, and it opens up all the gateways. There's no blockage. There's no doubt. There's no fear, and it connects you to the divine, the core of your being. It connects you to pure consciousness, the God, and beyond. So it is important for us as we're in these bodies. No matter how much it's been attacked, suppressed, just tried to be destroyed, it still is resilient and it still breathes. And by releasing this pure liquid energy over it, it's full functioning. It does what it was meant to do. Open up the gateways and all the particles of existence and all the gateways to the God and pure consciousness and beyond. We're all consciously aware, each and every one of us, that we are of and from the highest of the deepest, deepest, deepest eternal love, of and from the highest of the deepest, deepest, deepest eternal gratitude. And that our heart, mind, our God, the body, and everything beyond is one. We're all love. We're all God. And we're all one, we're all God, and we're all love. And we're merged. And we're actually paradise on this planet. We're heaven on earth. We have others with us. Other reflections of us. Different aspects. Different uh, versions, I guess you could call it. But all the same. From the aspect of divine creation. So we have the archangels, the cherubim, the seraphim, the archetypes. This is a civilization that vibrates at a different frequency than we do. Trillions of them. We don't see them like we see each other, but we meet them a lot in this life. We meet them a lot. We don't really, we don't really go to it right, right in.
in the interaction, but we do. It does dawn us dawn on us a certain way after it. Did you meet a piece of you? Yes. Did you interact with a part of you? Yes. We're all one, and one is all. So what that means is, is that we're we don't change as the core existence that each and every one of us are, because we're all one. Now, because of their frequency, they can have thousands in a very small area. That's why they can surround any one of us at any one time. That's really bliss. Then we have the Ascended Masters, Kuan Yin, Maitreya, Buddha, Lakshmi, Ganesh, Gaia, St. Germain, Sananda, Jesus, El Moria, Abundantia, Pell, Thought, many, many, many more. Who are they? These are those who have ascended out of body, mastered ascension out of body, and hold God form pure consciousness. Are we them? Are they us? Yes. We're all one. We have we've ascended into physical form to experience. It's kind of like an adventure. And that's what we've done. We are creating an adventure for ourselves through this journey of self-discovery. So we're all gathered, all consciously aware. Archangels, cherubim, seraphim, archetypes, uh, uh, all of the ascended masters, ourselves, one, all consciously aware that we are of and from the highest of deepest, deepest, deepest eternal love and of and from the highest of deepest, deepest, deepest eternal gratitude. And so what are we going to do in this liberation of this planet and this meditation and this now in the forming of the circle of light? We're going to call out to all the, all the other reflections of all of us, all of the light energy beings and all that there is, ever has been, ever will be, beyond forever and forever and only those that are consciously aware that they are of and from the highest of deepest, deepest, deepest eternal love and of and from the highest of deepest, deepest, deepest eternal gratitude can be with us in this now, in this meditation, and the forming of this circle of light. They come in the Google Plexus. One Google Plex fills this entire universe. They come in trillions of Google Plexes from every direction. And they are with us now. Are we them and are they us? Yes. We call upon all the inhabitants of inner earth, hollow earth, agartha, beneath earth. Many civilizations and species, only those who are consciously aware that they are of and from the highest of deepest, deepest, deepest eternal love and of and from the highest of deepest, deepest, deepest eternal gratitude can be with us in this now in this meditation of forming the circle of light. And they and the billions are with us now. We call upon all the off-worlders, all the galactics, all the celestials. Only those who are consciously aware that they are of and from the highest of deepest, deepest, deepest eternal love and of and from the highest of deepest, deepest, deepest eternal gratitude can be with us in this now, in this meditation, in the forming of the circle of light. Now, we're only familiar with a fraction of them. And somewhat familiar, to a certain degree and perspective, and this includes all the levels and all the species of these civilizations, and remember that we have high frequency in these civilizations and we have low frequency, see, and we have in between frequency. So it does not mean that all these civilizations are nasty and all totally 100% destructive, because they are not. So we have the Palladians, the Syrians, the Andromedans, the Arcturians, sea lions, the Reticuli. We have the Gray, the Nord. We have the Draco, the Reptilian. We have the Golden Pyramid and the Albion. And there's so many more, it would take years to name them all throughout all the galaxies, universes, and existences. 
evolution and our enlightenment, our ascension, freeing ourselves from our own self-imposed bondage and our own self-imposed slavery. And they come in the billions and they are with us now. We call upon all of our loved ones, all those who have ascended out of body in this lifetime, in all lifetimes that we've inhabited. And only those who are consciously aware that they are of and from the highest of the deepest, deepest, deepest eternal love and of and from the highest of deepest, deepest, deepest eternal gratitude can be with us in this now, in this meditation, forming this circle of life. And they, the billions, are with us now. We call upon all the light energy beings who have decided to be in the following forms on and above and below this planet Earth, Gaia, and this now, in this meditation, and forming this circle of light. Now, there's trillions of them in shapes, colors, sizes, forms, configurations, of which we only see maybe 1%. And only those that are consciously aware that they are of and from the deepest, 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 deep, deep eternal love, and of and from the highest and the deepest and deepest, 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 deepest eternal gratitude can be with us in this now, in this meditation, a form of the circle of light. And just to name a few of the ones that we're somewhat familiar with, the fairies, the sprites, the elves, the gnomes, the dwarves, the trees, the trolls, the elementals, earth, air, water, fire, ether, the mermaid, the dolphin, the whale, the pegasus, the unicorn, the centaur, and the minotaur. Many, many, many more. And in the trillions, they are with us now. And we're all formed, all gathered for the massive liberation of this planet Earth, Gaia, Arya, in this now, in this meditation, and form of the circle of light. And all of our gods as one, arm in arm, hand in hand, as one. We're in full compassion, non-negativity, non-ego. Stillness of mind. Gentleness, kindness, generosity, humbleness. Bliss, joy, peace. Tranquility, benevolence, and abundance. We're all one. World God, world love. And our God light energy is in all that there is, ever has been, ever will be, ever beyond and forever, and it continues to intensify and it continues to expand. We all fight. This is the core of our essence and our being. It is pure consciousness, God light energy, creator soul, deep eternal love, and it is so brilliant that it grays out the darkness of space and it saturates everything and everything eternally, head to toe, inside now, all life, the supreme value of the universes. And we begin to ascend above this planet. As we begin to ascend, we're met with this massive gossamer field. It's everywhere, little teeny mirrors of trillions of vibrant, reflected, colored lights flashing every direction, everywhere. Because it is all reflections of all of us. And we're met with the emerald green flaming healing light of Archangel Raphael. This is a column that reminds each and every one of us that we are the power of healing. Then, we are met with the violet, blue, purple, flaming light of Archangel Michael. This is a column that reminds each and every one of us of our omnipotent power, strength, and resolve. Then we're met with the white fire. This is a column that reminds each and every one of us that we are imbued with an impenetrable white light God armor head to toe, inside and out, it cannot be disturbed or harmed in any which way, shape, form, or another from any external authority, any external power, any. It is impervious to external obstacles, invasions, harm, but 
only you have the power that if you choose, whether consciously or unconsciously, to lower your vibrational frequency deeply enough in hate and anger and fear and frustration and hurry and ego, then you will create a breach in your white fire armor, allowing lower dark matter, survival matter frequencies to come flooding in. Now, if you do decide to do this, then you're met with the purple transmuting flame. This is a column that reminds each and every one of us that we can bring it in immediately. Transmute all of these lower dark matter, survival matter frequencies into neutral light substance, sending them back to pure consciousness where there are no more. And then we are met with the violet ray right behind that. And the violet ray is a column that reminds us that we can bring in the violet ray. We can literally cleanse and purify the area where these lower frequencies were. We can restore our field of deep eternal love and gratitude and harmony and balance and seal the breach in our white fire armor. Then we're met with a golden white pink light. What is this column? This column reminds each and every one of us that we're the sunsets on this planet and we're the sunrises. We are the forests, we're the trees, we are the oceans, we are the skies and the clouds, we are the rainbows. We cannot, we cannot not be, because we are everything, everywhere. Then we begin to ascend even further. Some of us step outside of our physical bodies and hover effortlessly above them. And then we, we gaze upon this massive crystalline light tower that we created and it's larger than the solar system. So it's very easy for us to look into it and see this, this auric field, trillions of vibrating soft waves of light coming out. And in the center is a golden white beam of light that is literally folding out and enveloping everything. This is the purest of the deepest eternal love and gratitude. It floods us all 24-7. Because it is us. Now at the top of this, we designed it so that the golden ocean can come cascading down 360 degrees eternally. And it does so. And it continues to do so to all of our brothers and sisters on this planet, in it, above it, and below it. It floods, saturates head to toe. It is deep eternal love. All of us are drops of that golden ocean and each of us hold the essence of that ocean. So we look around and we see our meditative sphere it's at center circle. We created this sphere well over two years ago. This sphere holds in perpetual motion over a thousand of our meditations. In perpetual motion. All intended from all of us, the one, throughout all existence and existence, all consciously aware that we are of the highest of deepest, deepest, deepest eternal love and of the highest of the deepest, deepest, deepest eternal gratitude and we are the light. We are the love, and we are one, and we are the God. Listen to the silence beneath the mind. Listen to the silence beneath the mind. I'll join you in the meditation, and I'll return to close the 